Hi, my name is Brianna Schaller, and today I will be doing a presentation about Alice Neal, who was a famous um, American woman artist. Growing up, she grew up in a household where her mother was very bold. Um, she was the dominant over the household, and she was very bold and independent. Um, she ran the house, but her father, on the other hand, was just kind of followed suit. He grew up in a wealthy family, but um, once he reached adulthood, they kind of just gave up on him, and he went to work for the railroad um, to be a clerk. As a child, Neil was very shy and uncertain of everything except her art, which even at a young age. Um, she was raised in Colston, Pennsylvania, where she graduated high school at as well. After high school, she went on to do um, work for the Air Force, doing janitorial work. But um, she worked here for about three years, roughly, and the whole time she was going to night school for art. She went to the School of Industrial Art and another local school around Colston. So that's a little background information about her. Um, continuing, in 1921, she ended up quitting both her jobs and went to Philadelphia School of Design for Women where she kind of lost track of her studies and went a little bit wild. So her family sent her to Chester Springs. Um, while at Chester Springs, she met Carlos, who she later ended up marrying. And um, they moved to Havana, where he grew up. Um, she fell pregnant, and after the baby was born about a year later, she lost the baby to diphtheria, which she also lost her brother to when he was about eight. So they ended up getting pregnant again and having a second daughter, Isabella. Um, shortly after, Carlos left Alice and took Isabella to his family in Havana to be raised, and Alice came back to Harlem, or she ended up coming back and going to Spanish Harlem. So a few months after Carlos left her, Alice had a nervous breakdown. Um, she tried to commit suicide several times and was in and out of different hospitals or psychiatric wards um, for nearly a year and a half until she decided that she wanted to get well. She came home in the summer of 1931 where she found a sailor who went to live with shortly after meeting him in Greenwich Village. Um, by this time, she was becoming known as an artist and the Whitney Museum asked her to come paint for them. And while she was gone, the sailor was a drunk and um, accused her of cheating on him and destroyed everything. Her clothing, all of her art that she had there, destroyed it all. So after all this, she went on to join the WPA where she showed her paintings that she had um, recently done in a gallery. Um, she ended up back in Harlem for 25 years after this where she raised her two sons and she painted during these years but she didn't follow any kind of school or artist. Um, she felt that after all that she had been through no one should ever have to feel that pain. Um, she considered herself to be humanist and how she seen the world is how she painted it and you will see that a lot later in her work. Um, this is one of her earlier paintings in 1931 of the sailor. His name was Kenneth Doolittle, and that's the title of the painting. So, um, some of her, before we get into her, some of my main pieces I chose, um, it was very well known for her character. Cherry Smith wrote an article about her called Alice Neal, um, which you can find in the Shake Library, and she described Alice as being, and I quote, determined, brainy, beautiful, self-absorbed, profoundly unconventional, Neil radicalized portraiture and penetrating, often unnerving paintings of a diverse spectrum of individuals, from her neighbors in Spanish Harlem to when Andy Warhol bearing his bullet wounds in her article, Alice Neal. So, um, for most of her life, as an artist, she did portraiture. Um, this was very rare during this time in about the mid 20th century, um, where very few artists painted um, paintings of people, let alone a woman. Um, because of this, she was considered important artist, but recognition wasn't given to her until later in life. And this quote is um, from Alice Neal. She said, I do not pose my sitters. I do not deliberate and then concoct. Before painting, when I talk to the person, they unconsciously assume their most characteristic pose which in a way involves all their character and social standing, what the world has done to them in their retali retaliation. Okay, so the first painting I chose was one of her earlier works in 1926, and it's called Carlos Enriquez, which is her husband. Um, another, this is very significant. Um, you can tell she's still evolving as an artist in this painting, um, but you can see some of the same features and composition is similar as it will be in her later work that I will show you. 
The subject matter here appears to be a man sipping on champagne, um, looking off into the distance as though he is bored or distracted and just disinterested in the room. Um, she composed a painting so that the man was the only thing really seen. The glass in the his man is very distorted. You can barely make him out, but you know they're there. And as you'll see in her later paintings, the face will have more distinct features, but this one it just kind of all runs together and that just really shows her as an early artist. The artistic form here is different than her lady painter painting. The background appears much darker because of her use of the darker colors. And um, the content of the painting is just of her husband who left her and sent her into this nervous breakdown where she ended up in a psychiatric ward. Um, this was her first love. So the second painting I chose is one of her middle works. Um, it's called TV Harlem and this is kind of a close up here and I'll show another one of the painting. Um, she did this in 1941. Alex Neal lived in Spanish Harlem for about 22 years. So um, she grew very close to the neighbors and the community there. Um, in Ella Monroe's book, Originals American Woman Artist, she stated this time to be, and I quote, an age of massive social failure. During this time, Neil was in her middle life and the social conscience of the time was moved, and, but Neil continued to paint portraits because that's what she loved to do. Even though the majority of the painters were um, doing abstract expressionism, she stuck to this. So here, is a close-up of the painting. Uh, the painting's contents, you can see, is just thick, uh, you can obviously colored, um, dark-skinned boy. And the subject matter is obvious, looking at it, he appears very scrawny. The artistic form of the painting uses part-to-parts relationship very well. If you look, um, he, she was able to shade the top of the boy's shoulder and make the front of it very light, so that you can kind of contrast to the dark, so you can like see his bony figure. Um, the collarbone gives away, it gives away to this thin figure. The relationship of the boy's contorted arms and his exaggerated long neck to his body gives away to the, his figure and his illness. The lines around the bandage draw your eye from the first thing you see in the picture to the disproportion on his left side. Um, she also used dark heavy lines to contrast his figure against the light background to just show like he, he was very ill. Um, the painting's content is about the illness that came to those living in poverty. Uh, this particular boy was a young Puerto Rican who was just in her community in Spanish Harlem uh, who was suffering from tuberculosis. So, and then the last photo I chose is one of her very most famous well-known and it's called Andy Warhol and the man that she painted was Andy Warhol. So she painted this in 1970. Um, as you'll have seen, and if you know any of her work, she has a consistent theme in her paintings of her sitters, and that is to show the real characteristics that was very important to her. So, one of Neil's most recognized pieces was of Andy Warhol, who was a very popular during this area. During this area, um, in this painting, the man's body appears distorted, as do many of her portraits, but. Just by looking at this painting, you can quickly grasp the subject matter of the man who appears sick and just sad and kind of distraught in the face. So the curvy contoured lines on his stomach make his scars stand out as you see on his stomach. They're very evident and just, you can tell they're kind of the main focus of the picture um, along with his face. So as you can see in her other painting, she makes the man's collarbone stand out by shading them, um, you know, showing the way to his thin figure, yet he kind of has like a distorted, like, belly and you can see that he has like a wrap or a corset around his stomach kind of trying to hide like his flabby stomach and the wounds show where he um had been attempted someone had tried to murder him a few years earlier so here um you can tell that the content of the photo goes deep into the man's character um he has always been a big big shot you know but neil uncovers his deep down feelings of being insecure and lonely and the pink skin of his face is set off by the green tones she has used um, to make him appear sickly and just distraught looking. Neil used thick lines around his chin to make his face appear very thin compared to his neck, which was shaded very light in contrast to his dark face. So you can tell her use of like pale, like light colors, like the blue and the light pink and the green, just really like can set the mood for the picture. The composition of the painting really focuses on the man, particularly his face and abdomen looks um, significant. 
the blue shadow behind his back room just really makes his body stand out. And as you see in a lot of her paintings, like, like the chair just looks like a sketch. The background, there's not a lot of background, but then the man's body is so distinct. There's so many features that she adds in. So, during the end of her life, Neil fell ill in 1980, where she found out that she had advanced colon cancer. Um, in 1984, she was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, the host, which he's a very famous TV host. Um, you probably know him. He's very widely known, even today, so that's pretty cool. But even while Neil was sick, she, con sick, she continued to paint at her home until she died later that year in New York at her apartment. Um, she was one of the very few women artists of her generation who actually got to live and see um, the amount of appreciation that was given to her. This is one of her most famous pictures, and it's the self-portrait of her, obviously, that she painted in 1980. And she had actually started painting this in the mid-70s and abandoned it until um, it ended up being five years later she was invited to put a self-portrait in the exhibition at Harold Reed Gallery in New York. So the subject matter suggests that she's stern, independent woman, which is what she is. Um, the content of the painting is Neil accepting herself without shame. The form of her body as if she's leaning forward while holding the paintbrush and claws in her other hand looks as though she is busy. And during this time, news were very, I mean, very rare. Even like, you know, like um, self-portraits were, but I mean, nude paintings were just very rare. This got her a lot of recognition. So, um, her art was brought to fame. In 1974, she was the subject of a major art show at the Whitney Museum. She received an award from President Carter for her contributions in 1979, and in 1981, she had an ex exhibition of her work in Moscow, and was honored by New York's Mayor Ed Koch in 1982. Um, she had many contributions to the world. Uh, she did lectures and panels and discussions at numerous important museums, art schools, and universities while she was alive, and she even protested against the Vietnam War. Today, Neil is widely known for her major as a major American woman artist. She witnessed major changes from abstract expressionism to conceptual art, but never followed any of them. She stuck with her unique interest in portrait painting and is capturing the psychology and just the real emotions of individuals. She refused to do traditional categories, and people have claimed that this is why she's considered one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. Her emotive brushwork and insight into psychology foresee the movement that actually happened several decades ahead of her time. Um, her impact is evident in her work. Many of her very popular portraits today, such as Chuck Close and Lucician Freed, or Freud, Elizabeth Payton's ideas about egalitarian among a broad range of society and Marlene Dumas' view of political and social issues are strongly due to Alice Neal, um, not to mention the countless other artists who have learned valuable lessons from her work. Her interest in psychology and the human condition of people who lived in New York is very closely related to today's um, project called Humans of New York. So Alice Neal is very famous and well-known even today, and she's had many contributions to the art world. Thank you.